I am leaving a meeting I had with one of my mentors. Someone I've known for maybe 20 years. And it got me to thinking. We all need mentors. But we live in a culture where people don't want to admit their weaknesses. It's almost as if they would rather stay fucked up than to say, look, I'm deficient in this area. I need help. Now, you do have a lot of people who do take that position. You have more who feel that they can figure it out. I used to be the same way. I used to be like, I can figure it out. It's a scam. There's no real information there. I was a consumer of the hope of finding some magic jelly beans. I used to think that, hey, there's always got to be some other angle. And once I let that stuff go about 14 years ago and really started to work on myself, started to reach out to people, my life changed. Because once you change your thinking, you're going to change your life. But what happened that I found was really fundamental was the number of mentors that popped up along the way. And it's, I don't know if it's destiny, I don't know if it's just how things were supposed to be, but when I started selling contract office furniture, and contract office furniture is, you go to a business, any business, the restaurant, that's contract office furniture, for fixtures and finishings, uh, you go to an, a building, cubicles, desk, all that falls under contract office furniture. So I was always meeting high-level executives or business owners. And this went on for years. And it was a grooming process into me because when you're sitting there trying to sell someone some office furniture, you have to ask a lot of you know personal questions like, what is your budget? When are you moving? What's your business model? How are, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to reward your employees? Are you trying to increase efficiency? There's so many questions and you spend a lot of time. I remember this one job I did and the lady's first name was Kathy, super nice lady. Um, I remember we went to 10 different showrooms. We had lunch maybe five times. And someone in her corporation wanted to go with another guy, but she fought for me. And I didn't get the whole deal, but I got half the deal, which I was grateful for. And we became friends. And she, in turn, became a mentor to me indirectly. Because when you use the word mentor, people think of a contrived, planned thing where you pick someone out and you ask them to mentor you and you go to lunch. That is one way, but I don't have any mentors like that. All my mentors have been, this person is doing something that I want to do and I'm going to sit back, shut up, and watch. Take Andy, the guy that owned the company. Well, he pretty much provided parts for pretty much ATMs across the country and even internationally. It's a very niche field. This guy, eight-figure business, doing all this stuff. He drove a pickup truck. His salespeople had, you know, Lexuses, Mercedes Benz. And he had the ability to, if he wanted to buy a new building, he could have. If he wanted to trick out the office and make it super sexy, he could have did all that. But... He told me this. He's like, I need furniture, but I need it to be more functional than pretty. And he stuck with that because he said, essentially, I don't have to have it. It's kind of like a, a perk for the employees. We're growing. We need North Spes. And he, he just said something during one of our meetings that just stuck with me to this day. He's like, why spend money you don't have to spend? And... You know, I'm just looking at it. Now, he had it in spades. And I was like, really? I, I, it, it just, you see, I'm a salesman. I'm trying to get the deal. I'm trying to get the biggest deal possible. And he's like, no. Oh. And I did get the deal. And what I had proposed was around $80,000. And it ended up being $40,000. So he sliced it in half and got more stuff. And this was kind of towards the end when I was popping out of contract furniture and getting into the resale business because... I actually sold him used furniture, you know, and it, it just, this theme just kept popping up. And I talked to him several times, super nice guy. And I was at a garage sale that was held by his former partner. Uh, it, it was, it was just crazy because 
I'm going to see a friend and I see the sign that when you get in the resale business, you know, you just go check out garage sales just to check them out GP, even if you're not going to buy anything because you never know. And I'll go there and I just notice I see these labels and I see boxes and it's like, you know, Andy, she's like, yeah, that's my former business partner. And it's just, you know, we started talking and I actually ended up doing a different deal with her for her office, just a one office deal, but it was money. And I just kept looking at these mentors, you know, another one, if you're in Atlanta and you know where Perimeter Mall is, there's this building that's kind of like a brown burgundy, it looks almost futuristic, and it's called Ravinia. I know the guy that built that, and I'll tell you how I got him, and we didn't really, we only met, we talked several times, but we only met once. I was dogged and determined. I must have called this guy, his first name's Matt. I called this guy maybe 90 times. <laughs> I'm serious. In the morning, lunch, I called him, called. I refused to give up. I'm like, we are getting a meeting. And get a meeting. He's a super nice guy. He drives up in a Porsche 911. Uh, we, we, I take him to lunch, $3 cafe, and we just talk. And I really couldn't do anything for him where he was in his business, but it taught me something. He gave me a meeting based on just you know, perseverance, just for the perseverance. I'm quite sure if I contacted him today, he would meet me today and it'd be a totally different meeting because I'm a totally different person. Because one of the things that I learned from that meeting was you got to be really careful on picking your battles because I was like, he, he worked for a company that was a target of our company, but because I, there was information asymmetry, I didn't know which direction they were going in. So he was a good guy. I had great products, but I couldn't help him. And in a very polite way, he told me that he, you know, and I mean, he left me feeling good, honestly. And I took from that experience how to meet people and to really, really, really find out a lot as much as possible about the people I was calling. Because if you were ever in inside sales, you know, information is key. You know that you could be calling the wrong person for weeks. And then by the time you find the right person, deal's done. So he was a mentor. And Andy was a mentor. Then even people who fucked me were mentors. Especially one, his name's Ken. Uh, we used to have a joke. How do you know if Ken's lying? His lips are moving. I mean, seriously, this dude, he was a trip. But um, I was really pissed off one day. I was going to quit and just move on. And something said, just, just ride it out. Just ride it out. Just ride it out. And I'm in this den of iniquity and all this crazy stuff is going on. And I was just like, you know what? I, I think that day, my first element of the true hustler mindset popped out. Because I was in a place I didn't want to be, but there was value. So I started creating my own economy. That's how I got the job where I sold this, this office furniture for these other, this other group of people. And if I had left... I would have missed that opportunity, which gave me the income to jump into my own business. I would have totally missed that if I had left it. So dealing with him, now the thing is, he's not 100% bad. Actually, in many ways, he was brilliant. I, I learned so much from this guy. I can't stand him to this day. But it taught me that even when you don't like somebody, if you're open to the lessons that are there, you can learn a lot. Because there are people... I have hired people I couldn't stand, but they were good at their job. You know, it's about separating that personal shit from the business shit. And he taught me that lesson because I was working there. I was getting paid and I was making more money running my own company, working for his company. He didn't know it. He was just like, you're not in the office much. I'm just, I'm busy, man. I'm just real busy, right? He had no clue to what was going on. But everything that I was doing, he taught me. I learned how the job costs a job. I learned how to organize crews. I learned how to do an install. There were so many things that I learned from being in that situation that if I had did the typical weak-minded thing is if you're in a point of pain and uncomfort, you leave or you stop or you do drugs or whatever. You, you move away from that pain. And I'm here to tell you, if you ride that pain out, you're going to find some beauty on the other side because that one decision and a lot of good things in your life start with one decision 
made during some adversity, it set it set the stage for everything else that came after that one decision. I mean, I, I shudder to think that if I had left and just said, fuck it, I'm out of here, I might, you, I, this YouTube channel probably wouldn't exist. You know, Chaos Theory, look it up, go to Wikipedia, because it's, it's a lot to it. The Butterfly Effect, Chaos Theory. That one thing in time, the ripple is still going out in the lake. It is still going out from that one decision, because I remember I was in the office, it was 11 o'clock at night, I was pissed. I was just like, fuck, I can go work here. I can, this motherfucker's getting on my nerves. And just that voice just said, stay, ride it out. So I did that. And like I said, three months later, my income doubled just from that one decision. And, you know, I, I mean, I'll just give you some of the stuff that used to happen there. I was the only person of color that worked there in a salesman capacity. I would walk into board meetings and, all the guys, all the sales guys were doing well financially. They had big houses, pools, and they walked in and one was like, so-and-so was an owner this weekend. That's what I walked into. That was the fucking environment. And, you know, the people on YouTube, they crack me up because if you say something in the video that's not even related to them, they turn into hurt little bitches. I was dealing with that shit up live, up close, personal, and in real fucking time daily i'll tell you another part of that uh there was this uh, lady she used to process the orders i'm not going to say her name because actually toward the end we became friends which is really wild because she couldn't stand me and i i learned how to separate a lack of familiarity from racism because there are a lot of white people that if you don't take the time to really look at the situation You'll think of what some of their, the stuff they do is racist. And I had her pegged as a straight racist. I figured, you know, I said she's got a hood in the car. And what it was, she had never, ever met a black person on the level that she met me. And I'm not talking about I was on this high level. It's like we used to talk every day. We went to lunch a few times. We got to know each other. She had never had the experience of getting to know a black person and... I just started to see her a little differently. And then, you know, she became an advocate. You know, she would make sure my orders were handled. And she started giving me juicy intel. Like, uh, I'll give you an example. We were doing something that was... that Herman. We were getting Herman Miller Aaron chairs from a dealer. And if Herman Miller knew what was going on, they would have frowned on it. What I didn't know, and she, she showed me the invoice. And I remember she came to my desk. And she put the invoice in my tape. And she put her little pink fingernail on the line right and i'm looking at the line and i'm on my computer i'm doing this and i'm looking at the line and she said you really need to look at this and i'm like okay and i look at it and when we hit a certain threshold in buying chairs the price dropped 80 dollars a chair now our commissions was based on 50 percent of the net you're selling in you selling 10 chairs that's a 400 dollar swing and the thing is what the guy was doing, he wasn't telling us about the additional discounting, but we were still getting our commissions based on what we thought the pricing was. Because a lot of these guys, they just handed stuff and the install guy. See, I did my own installs. I looked at paperwork. I studied figures. I did all that stuff. I was, I, was, I mean, seriously, I had the key to all, everyone had the key to office. But I was up in that joint 11, 12 o'clock at night just looking over numbers. And, you know, and she did that for me. And when I started my company, she even sent me a resume because things just completely deteriorated in that situation. But I didn't need any one of her experience levels since it was just me. So, and she became a mentor. She became a mentor on, you know, humanity. Because a lot of times we live in a society of first impressions. First impressions. First impressions. If I went with my first impression with her, if I went with my second impression of her, if I went with my third impression of her, if I went with my fourth impression of her, if I went with my fifth impression of her, I never would have found out about that discounting thing, which realized, because I remember the month I was putting in a huge project, we had sold, I had sold 125 Aarons, so that $80 swing times 125 bucks was huge, was huge. And I remember going into the office and showing him the invoice. And I was like, you know, my commission is not right. Because based on this. And he was like, well, you, you know what? You're right. We'll fix that immediately, right? <laughs> I 
I was like, you motherfucker. But I learned how to play the game, and that's that's my new thing. Don't hate the player. Don't hate the rules. Learn how to play the fucking game. Learn the rules so you can win. Let me say that right. Don't hate the player. Don't hate the game. Learn the fucking rules so you can win. And I'm just sitting here, like I said, in the den of iniquity. There's these guys who are, they're racist. It's just, they are racist. The guys in the boardroom, they would say all that shit. And they was like, yeah, we're going to take you golfing, Glendon, blah, blah, blah. And that shit never materialized. But by staying there, I learned so much. It was like crazy. And when I did the thing with, uh, yes, when I'm with the black guy, the crazy Craigslist story, and there were black people come in, they're like, fuck that bitch. Going through that process for months gave me the tools to deal with her and end up making a lot of money off of her because I have this whole thing on racism. And I'm going to say this. Racism is responsible for maybe 5% of the bad shit that's happened to me in my whole life. Maybe 5%. The other 95% of the bad shit that happened in my life is because I fucked up. So... If you, you know, for me looking at it like that, racism is not going to stop me from doing what I want to do. It's really not going to stop any black person. It's really a mindset. And just going through all that stuff, you know, it was funny. The woman who became my mentor, who pointed out that big discount opportunity for me, was actually a little meaner to me than the guys who were slapping me on the back, who probably did have hoods in their closet. Because these guys were like older than me, like 20 years older than me. So they came from a different world. And I just looked at that experience. And then when I left there and had my own company, I remember going to back to a client. I couldn't get when I was working for the larger company because our pricing structure wasn't going to make those deals work. And I noticed they still had requirements. And I went there. And this is when I did my first finance deal. Because I was a new company, I didn't have terms or anything with anybody, so they were all like, you got to pay cash and put down deposits. You know, after two or three deals, we'll give you terms. So, I didn't have the money to do this deal. And I was like, okay, I know they need it. So, what I did, I went to them and I said, look, you can get an incredible opportunity here. I will show you the true pricing. I will only charge you 10% above the cost, but the deal is... You got to pay for everything up front. And I showed them the invoice. I showed them the wholesale price. And the guy that owned the company was like, fuck yeah. That's exactly what he said. And this guy's totally surprised. He said, fuck yeah, we'll do it. You, we'll get you a check today. Because I was saving them a ton of money. A ton of money. And they were getting great stuff. So they gave me the check. I went to the bank, cashed it. And I went straight to my suppliers. And I paid them and I bought the stuff. Just pay them everything, you know, because normally, because I was just like, you know what, this is a done deal. That's how I looked at it. Because part of me was like, hey, just pay them half because, you know, I could have got away with like 50% down. I just paid them everything. And then the guy who owned the company, the supplier company, he calls me up like three days later. And he's like, uh, that's a pretty nice deal you got. Um, I'm not supposed to tell you this, but there is... A competitor of yours was a similar deal and they're trying to get they can't do it but i think you can and he emailed me this is the supplier right this is the supplier this is business he emails me to contact i go in there i talk to the people and i you know it takes me a week because this is brand new i don't know what their situation is it takes me a week to put the proposal together put some stuff for them and i go hit them with the same pitch and i was like look show them everything Boom, they jumped on it. I mean, 30 minutes. And it's like, there's like, Glenda, could you leave the room for a minute? And it's like, sure. And I went to the waiting room doing some stuff. And they called me back and they said, yeah, we're going to go with it. Uh, give us, you send us an invoice and we'll cut you a check. Did the same thing. Went back, paid him again. He gave me another one. Dude started taking me to lunch. But because I did those deals and he mentored me because he took me to lunch and he said, okay, you know, I think you're bright. I think you this. This is what you're doing wrong. This is what you're doing right. So because of him, I got four deals. Now, it was only 10% because I got them so quick, I made a lot of money that month. And I didn't have any debt. Then at this point, I get terms and stuff. And he, I mean, he's just mentoring me the whole way, just, just really just looking out for me. And he's throwing me bones. 
and it was just like, wow, what I learned from that situation is dare the fucking try. <laughs> just dare the fucking try. I mean, when you are new, you can't do what the big dogs are doing. That is one of the things that drives me crazy on YouTube. There are so many people who are bright. They have talent. They're good to go and they're hungry and I get that. But you can't do what the big dogs do because you haven't run the race long enough. And then get mad about it. And it's really about knowing your place. And this is not to be demeaning or to say you should sit down. It's if you're not honest with yourself where you are in your business life, you're pretty much going to lie to other people about your business life because that's why so many people don't make it because they refuse to accurately evaluate where they are. They refuse to do it. Magic Jelly Bean City. And he mentioned me for like a year and he threw about 20 deals my way because he understood that I could get the money because this is another thing. A lot of salespeople get the money and just throw it. And even though I had terms and everything with him, I got a deal like that, paid it off, paid it off, paid it off. And uh, another thing that happened from that was, and this, when, when you start going to your bank with big checks, they put you on the radar. They start, they will call you and they will like either a wealth management person or something. Someone's going to call you when you roll in the bank with three or four checks in a month. 25 you know when you deposit three four hundred grand in an account in a month someone's going to call you another thing that's going to happen is they're going to know you by name when they see you walk through the door it's like hey mr cameron because i didn't think it was big shit because when i worked for the other company i mean shit million two million a month going into the account so i'm like i'm just like you know i felt like plankton in the sea of contract office furniture and then once again another bank manager we went to lunch and she told me that a million dollar depositor, that someone has a million dollars in the bank and it's just sitting there, can make or break a branch. And that just totally blew my mind. It totally blew. I was like, really? And, you know, we, she mentioned me. She mentioned me about money and stuff because most people don't have money. She said, when you have a depositor with seven figures liquid cash, that is a huge win for a branch. Because she said it's rare. I was like, you're kidding me. She said she got promoted from her old job because she had three depositors with seven and eight figure accounts there. Those three depositors got her promoted. Three. Three. And, you know, she just schooled me on money. And I was just like, okay, so because, you know, it's like this is a corporation. You know, I'm running this stuff. I'm not making a lot of money. And she said, it doesn't matter. You are bringing in a lot of money for our bank and it makes our bank look better because we have heavy depositors. She says, the money comes in and goes out, it doesn't matter. It's like the fact that it's coming in, the fact that you can raise that type of money, it, it makes us look good. And then they start, and this is something else too. They can create credit products specifically for you. Like... I had a credit card with them. I don't have it anymore, but you go through the wealth management and you tell them what the credit limit is because you can get up to 50000 I think, without financials now. Back then, it was like thirty, And then once they see financials, and for me, since they had all these deposits on hand, they just went ahead and gave me a credit card with an $80,000 limit, which I use for business only because it was just like I knew me. But... That's why when you, you hear this stuff, like, you know, people are talking about their American Express black card and all this other stuff, private wealth management, there are people walking around with million dollar credit cards, million dollar visas, million dollar MasterCards with all kind of perks hooked up because it's called concierge boutique banking. You know, it's all that shit's created especially for you. That's why, you know, like was like, yeah, I got a black card and all this. Like they're giving that shit out like candy, and it's not. I mean, it really, you know, if you have a company in a year, you spend two hundred fifty thousand dollars with American Express, you'll probably get one, because a lot of people don't spend. They don't have that kind of business spending. They just don't. So, don't be overly impressed with a black card, because I know a guy, Doctor Isaac Willis. Uh, he's retired now, and when I worked for him. Dude had, and this was the 90s, early 90s. Dude had a credit card. It was Nations Bank at the time. 
but yeah, five hundred thousand dollar limit. Five hundred thousand. I saw the statement. That's how Dr. Ike was rolling. Uh, he had all kinds of stuff. Um, and I met him when I was in the military because he was a full bird colonel. And when Desert Storm came up, he came to work with us. And he was a real cool guy. And everybody, you know, he was dermatologist. And everybody was trying to get in there because, you know, he was the best. This guy wrote papers and everything. He was top dog in his field. I mean, you can Google it. Dr. Isaac Willis, Atlanta. Um, I learned a lot from him. He was a man. Because the thing is, he was like... A playful type of guy but if you saw that you were open he would school you so he was another mentor I mean all of this stuff and it's like I got that information from him before it matriculated into my life but because I knew the information I was able to be ready to receive it so if you need a mentor stop looking at hey let's sit down have coffee now the best way to get the best mentors is to be in action to be working on your business to be working on your dreams to really do what you need to do to make money because all of my true mentors everyone that's really really looked out for me it's giving me good information I was in action I wasn't sitting around with my hands like give me information give me information I was hungry I was out there I was shaking the money tree and when you shake the money tree you draw a lot of people to you. When you're when you're doing stuff like that, people start coming to you. As what's that expression? When the student is ready, the teacher shows up. I mean, that's what it happened time and time again. And all of my true mentors, all the people who were really doing it, that's how they popped up in my life because I was in action. So if you want to get real mentors, be in action. If you got a drink, start. Network, but actually have something fucking going on. I'm telling you, that speaks more loudly than the best resume, the best GPA, the best whatever. Have some stuff going on because it, it just, it makes you stand apart from everyone else. Uh, another guy that became my mentor, and this happened at a Volkswagen dealership years ago. I was a long, long, long time ago. This was the edge of my scrub days. And I was just sitting there talking about money. I didn't have any money, but you know, I would study stocks and bonds and stuff. And I was preparing myself for the future. And I was just telling him about you know financial plans. Dude mentored me on some stuff I didn't know and introduced me to his fine ass daughter. I'm serious. You know, just sharing my money philosophy with this man who looked like you know everybody's uncle. This dude was from California. He had 10 houses in California, sold all of them, and they were paid for, 10 houses, California, you do the math, sold all of them, paid for them, came to Atlanta in one of the most exclusive subdivisions, bought a micro mansion, paid cash for it, put the rest of the money in investments, and I learned a lot from that dude and his daughter, and I was just like, once again, being in action, opening your mouth, don't go out and ask someone to mentor you until you've actually done some shit. Fail a few times because when you're talking to these people, they're going to know if you're authentic or not because everyone that I know of has failed. Everyone that I know of has had some issues. They've had some challenges. These things happen. So when you have similar walks and similar experiences, the conversation flows so much better. And these people have helped me out so much. And the reason I'm doing this video is there's so many people on YouTube who are hungry for information that they'll listen to anybody and take it as gospel. And if you're listening to certain people, and mark my words, if you make it this far in the video, there are certain people in the reseller community, this time next year, they won't be here because their experience level is woefully inadequate to even school a ant. But do some stuff. Get started get started really really start making it happen in your life because I understand I was homeless at one point I lived in a boarding house with crackheads I, growing up I had a speech impediment I was in special ed for six fucking years so when I see all these excuses that I can't do this it's bullshit because I have walked through fire 
brimstone, atomic ashes in life, and I'm still here. And that, that stuff that, you know, you should fail, it's going to make you, I'm not going to say it's going to make you stronger. It's going to uncover what's already there. You're going to find out what you're made of, you know, when you're challenged like that. So, understand, you can get mentors by showing up in life. You really can. So, that's what I'm just putting this out there for you. You know, you, you can get it, but you need to get started. As Outcast said, get up, get out, and get something. Get it going on, get it popping, get it cracking. So, with that, as always, subscribe, like, comment, and Stay tuned for this special message. Okay, this is the new thing. I'm putting this offer up, and the day of this video, whatever day it goes up, because I do get videos in advance, it's, this offer starts that day, and it ends in 30 days. So 30 days after this video is up, this offer will no longer be valid, just to let you know. Part two, do not tell anybody about this offer. Don't put it in the comments. Don't tweet it. It's for you. The new thing with the hustler mindset is people who, you know, this video is 30 some minutes long. Those are my, if you made it to the end, you're my kind of person because you have a long attention span and that's what you need to be successful. So this is what you get. This is the, there's two offers here. There's two offers here. First offer is 200 bucks. You get three audiobooks, The Journey to Storage Auction Success, Pimping Craigslist for Fun and Profit, the Chrome Edition, and the Hustler Mindset, Pimping Your Mind for Success. Also, you get one month of the Hustler Mindset, part of that deal, and there's a webinar. It's called Getting Started. You get that also. Now, part two, if you choose, this is two separate offers. Now, I'll tell you how to get to them. Part two, the Hustler Mindset now is $250 per month. That's the price of it. If you want the Hustler Mindset and the audiobooks and the um, Hustler University, and resellology, I'm going to do that for 150 bucks a month. But you've got to stay signed up for six months. That's the deal. So you can have the one off or you can have the $150 deal. And the reason I brought up the price is I want to reach people who are actually working in business and have enough success to afford it because my information is like different than everyone else's because I walk this different path and for me to give this information to people who are just brand new who are really if you're hungry it's cool but if you're just brand new and you have no business experience this shit's going to overwhelm you and that's the thing that I've discovered and when I meet real business people or people with a plan it's like they take to it like to fish the water so that's to separate the regular folks from the folks who want to be not so regular put it that way so that's the deal and you have to send to me go to storageauctionshowgun.com hit the contact tab and say glendon it's within the 30 days and i want offer number one which is 200 bucks that's the three audio books that's the webinar and one month to the hustler mindset project or I want offer number two. And just to be clear, that one month of the Hustler Mindset Project does not include Hustler University, and it does not include Resellology, but it includes everything else. Just to be clear. Just to be clear. So, that's offer number one. Offer number two does include that, but I'm asking for a six-month commitment. I'm going to take your word for it since you're cool like that. And remember, don't tell anybody. This is for you. This is for you. And with that, I'll see you on the good side. Essentially, there's some confusion about my consulting services, and I thought I would make a short video to give you an idea of what's going on. Business consulting, business coaching, 
what I can do for you and you and you and you. Because many people are coming in and they have some expectations that I messed up and put those expectations in your head. So I'm going to reach in your head and rattle it around and pull them out and just throw them away like they're gone. Number one, I'm not doing any eBay consulting. I don't know. People keep saying, hey, you know, e I hate fucking eBay, okay? I fucking hate eBay. I, eBay. Why would I consult? Why would I even? No, it makes no sense. Amazon consulting. No, I don't do Amazon consulting. There's tons of people who do eBay coaching, Amazon coaching. I'm not one of them. I'm the guy that believes in having your own website. I'm the guy that believes in creating and using internet assets to build your stuff. Not using someone else's because I think even in the beginning, they're very good and they make you money. But at some point, they bite you in the ass. So at some point, if you're going to do this thing, you must have your own internet properties. At some point, you have to have it. So why not do that first? And if you still feel the urge, that little scratch to go do the third party platform, do it, but work on your own stuff. So just get that clear. I don't fuck with eBay. I don't mess around with Amazon. And what do I do? I am a strategist. I am a growth person. I do business development strategy. Why are we doing what we're doing? And create a roadmap to get you from point A to point B. Because many people are so in their business that they can't see their business. It's like, I can't see the inside of this shirt because I got it on. It's kind of like where many of you are with your business. You're so invested in it and you're so close to it, you can't see it because you're in it. So with me, I'm like, hmm, okay, that's going on, that's going on, hold on, let me... Oh yeah, you got that going on in there too. So that's where the strategy comes from because many small business owners have me syndrome. I can figure it out. I'm the smartest person. No, you can't figure it out. If I didn't come across Earl Nightingale's Lead the Field, Tony Robbins, Tommy Hopkins, Brian, Tr there were so many mentors that I picked up along the way because I couldn't figure it out. And there are many of you who's like, I'm going to figure it out. And what you're going to run into is an information ceiling. The information that you have is only going to get you here. And that's it. You're not going any further. You're not building any further because it's just you. I want you to think about something. And I've said this and no one has mentioned it in the comments since I've been doing YouTube. I started in the storage auction business with a partner from day one. It was never just me. There's always been additional elements to my business success. I had a partner. I had a very good partner who was an accountant. Okay, let's talk about that. So the business was properly structured, accounting, account set up, banking, from day one. That's one of the reasons that I was able to beat the Clampets and these other people. Because we had proper business protocols from day one. It makes a huge difference. Which means if you're just thinking you can do it by yourself, and there's some of you who are brilliant and you'll get it done by yourself, but the truth of the matter is most of you will not. That's reality. Not hating, just stating. So growth. You got a business that's going on, but there's this disconnect between the internet and certain people. Because I've said this before, you'll see someone, they're doing really great out there in the real world, but they can't really get it on the internet because the internet is a separate business, as I talked about in another video. Actually, that video is in Hustle University. Sorry about that. It's a different animal. It's different. It's like different section of the matrix with its own rules and regulations. So seriously, if you have a physical business and you have an internet business, you have two businesses. You don't have one. You have two. And if you treat them as two distinct businesses, you're going to get more traction. So business development. What are we going to do? What can we do? There's many times you want to start a business and once you start getting feedback from the world, it will lead you to start another business or another service or another product. Many people get scared and they'll be like, I'm going to do what I want to do because it's a dream versus taking the feedback. They ignore it and they crash and they just go boom. So I'm the guy that's like your guide, your shogun. I just show you the way I can help you build up so many things. Now, this is something you really need to do before you contact me because many people, and that's why I'm doing this video, ask yourself, what kind of life do you want? Now, this is going to sound offensive, 
But if you are more concerned with creating some business processes to get some money and forget the whole lifestyle planning, I don't want to work with you. And this is why, because you will build up that business and because you neglected the lifestyle planning, you're going to end up in the same place you were today emotionally. Even your business might be humming along, you might be making money. And just to put a dark moment on that, sometimes when people are fantastically wealthy from a fiscal standpoint, but their soul has poverty, their spirit is bankrupt. Sometimes these people kill themselves with millions of dollars in the bank. Just to let you know, that shit doesn't mean anything when your total life isn't together. So if you don't want to work on the lifestyle planning, because that's something I require. Like, what kind of life do you want? How do you want to live? What kind of hours you work? And people are like, well, I don't want that. I just want, you know, give me the stuff to make some money and then get shut the fuck up and get on. I don't want to work with you. If that's your thing, there's plenty of people out there. There's plenty of business consultants. Go find one, because I'm going to put you through that process. And it's a good process because I put myself through the process. And that's the reason I have to deal with traffic. That's the reason I get to work at home. That's the reason in the middle of the day I go work out in the gym because I don't have to deal with certain things because it was all part of a plan, a lifestyle plan. I don't want to drive. I don't want to commute. So I created a business to serve those needs. Now, why is that important? Brings your stress level from. I get in traffic. I don't get road rage. Because I'm not exposed to that. I'm not exposed to that all the time. So that's very, very important. Less stress, less wear and tear on your spirit and body. You can't replace this. It renews itself, but the less stress you put on it, and it's good, there's good stress and there's bad stress, but the less bad stress you put on it, the longer, the healthier you are. To me, that's incredibly important. Maybe not to you, but to me, it's incredibly important. So lifestyle planning. So another part of this is where do you want to go? What kind of business? I mean, what do you, where do you want to go? What are you doing? Do you want to save whale? I mean, what? What is your thing? What do you want to do? Because there are many people who's just like what I call a get money hustler. I just want to make some money because I have an immediate financial need and I need to solve that problem. Now, I don't, follow, I don't want to work with you. Number one, you're broke. Number, just straight up, you're broke. You don't have any money to pay me, and you will work the shit out of me with no money. I did it a few times just to be charitable, and it was one of the worst experiences because when you are not only fiscally broke, your spirit may be broke. Money comes and goes, but it's hard to fix a broken spirit. It may never be fixed. I don't have those kind of powers, so you need to come to me with some kind of intact stuff, some things that you're working on. So, I can't do that. I just can't do that. It is just crazy. Now, how much money do you want to make? I ask people this all the time, and I, I get the who the who who the, the, the owl look is it's well, I don't, well the first, the standard answer is as much as possible. That's a bullshit answer. It's very hard to quantify as much as possible. That gets you nowhere. You know, today, $30 will be as much as possible. And then your mind's like, okay, that's as much as possible. And then that's where you are. You need to have a number. You got to have a number. The number helps you tremendously. It forces you to focus. It forces you to look at things from a critical standpoint. Just, I want to make as much money as possible. Oh, I just hope to be happy. Oh, I hope to eat. Oh, I hope to have gas in my car. I'll just... You go nowhere with that. Nowhere. So know where you're going. Have a number. And we'll just start from there. And also, let's talk about the process. It takes me time to figure out who you are, where you want to be. And that's part of the process because a lot of people email me and they want to talk. And I'll see the email and I can just tell from that first email that this is a 3, 4, 5, 6, 10, 12, 20 hour deal. If your life is fucked up and it's been fucked up for a while, it's not going to become unfucked in an hour. It's not happening. So you got to invest in yourself. If you don't want to invest in yourself, that's fine. But don't expect me to invest in you when you don't want to invest in you. And that's what a lot of people do. It's like, hey, let's go to lunch. Hey, let No, <laughs> we need to do something. We need to make some stuff happen. And uh, one of the beauties of having a lifestyle plan, I'm very blunt, 
I use profanity. I've been called unfucking professional, and I am unfucking professional. I have no desire to be fucking professional. I have a great desire to be me. And this is me. This is what you get. You meet me in the street. This is how I'm going to be. You, when business deals, I'm going to tell you the truth and I'm going to help you make more money. I'm going to help you have a better life. There is benefit because I'm not going to blow smoke up your ass. Because if you're paying me, I'm going to tell you about yourself and we're going to do the things to make your business good. Which is another part. You need to have a business. You, you need to have a business. If you don't have a business, we are into business development planning, which takes hours. I cannot talk to you for 10 hours and get just a, a lunch. It's emotionally depleting because I want you to be successful. I'm rooting for you. I'm like, I got pom-poms. I'm cheering for you. And that's a long commitment. So with that, how do I get paid? Per hour. Per project, if you have a project, and this is once again where you need to tell me what you're trying to do. Because there are many people who's like, hey, you know, I want to do this, 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 this. And they'll give me what I call topical stuff. And only after the money's paid and the clock is really ticking, that they start telling me the truth. They'll tell me what they think. It's like, well, hey, you know, this is. I have had people that I didn't really find out the secret thing from them until the third conversation because it's like this. It's like I put on my hat and I'm in the mind and I'm looking for stuff. OK, OK. Oh, you, you know, you do this. Well, let's do this and this and this. I have to find this stuff out to help you. And many people are not used to being freaking honest with themselves. It's just like, well, I want honest with that. Everything else is just who the who. So that's part of the process. So you got to you got to know. So get paid per hour per project. And if you have a real business with real books and numbers, that means you have a your accounts already set up or if we have to do it. I'll do an equity split. So say I imp improve your business X amount, then I get X amount with a monthly retainer. Because there are many people who's like, hey, let's do the equity thing. Then I'll work for a whole month. And this happened. I actually did this for someone, work for a whole month. And they didn't want to pay me. And it wasn't because I didn't do what I was supposed to do. I did it too well. Because when her husband saw how much more money, he had a problem. He's like, well, was it really worth that? I mean, you know, we'll just throw you maybe, you know, this is what the guy said to me. He said, 800 bucks. It was a $20,000 differential. And he was like, well, yeah, that's worth about 800 bucks. And I just pulled up my contract and said, well, if I go to court, I'm going to get all 20. And then I got paid what they were supposed to pay me. So that whole thing is, and that's when, and once again, in my business, I have learned that I must set expectations. So if we do something equity. It's going to be a contract. You need to get an attorney. You need to look at this stuff. And it'll be a simple contract. But that's the deal. If you want to do equity, there will be some money up front. Plus, there'll be a monthly retainer. Plus the equity per month. I go per month because when I was doing per quarter, that got a little dicey. So those are the three modes of how I get paid. Now, let's talk about life coaching. I get this all of the time. If you're on my email address, e-list, you see this. You know, I'll send out something and there's people who want life coaching and they want to be guinea pigs and all this other stuff, but they don't want to pay for it. I don't have to give away stuff for free anymore. 2009, yes. 2010, a little bit. I don't have to do that anymore. And I'm not. <laughs> so if you want those services, fine. So, all right, as I always do, because if you stayed here this long, you're really interested and you're not fucking a pussy. You know, fucking doesn't really bother you. Actually, you're probably going to be fucking tonight because you're a winner. So this is the deal.